Back in 2003, I began writing to every important and influential person in the United Kingdom that I could find the address for, and I asked them to tell me their favorite flavor of ice cream. I got a lot of responses, and today we're going to look at the letters I received from the royal family. And here they are. Hi, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and before we get started, I wanted to point out that this is my second video on the subject of these admittedly very strange letters I wrote many years ago. If you haven't seen the first video yet, I'd strongly recommend you see it before watching this one, which you can do by clicking here, there. Um, <laughs> in that video, I explain a lot more about what I was doing and why. Actually, I, I don't really explain why because I didn't have any sort of really good reason for doing this. But anyway, watch that one first. But do make sure you come back to watch this video, volume two. Okay, and just to get everyone who has seen the last video back up to speed, starting in late 2003, for about a year and a half, I wrote to hundreds of very important people across the United Kingdom, and for the first letter at least, I sent everyone the exact same letter. It went, Dear whoever, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? I'd just like to know. Mine's chocolate. Please send me your picture for my very important person collection. Regards. Fredo Rockwell. Just to recap, the people I sent this letter to were important or influential, but not necessarily famous. Some important and influential people are famous, of course, but many are not. So I wasn't trying to write to celebrities per se, but some of the people I wrote to were extremely famous. Some of the most famous people in the world, actually. You know, the sorts of people whose lives are dramatized in globally popular Netflix series. And these are the letters I want to share with you today. The letters I received from the royal family, plus a few more from Britain's hereditary peers. So my plan in this video is to start with these, the hereditary peers, and work my way up the ranks of the nobility, so to speak. Uh, first, though, for my non-British audience, I should explain what I mean by a hereditary peer. So when you hear about someone being a lord or a baroness in UK life, which, to be honest, is not an everyday thing, uh, these people are almost always what are known as life lords. They are people who are appointed as lords generally in recognition for doing something very important or for being an expert in this or that. And these folks make up the vast majority of the House of Lords as it is currently constituted. But the titles of life lords are not passed on to their children. They're, they're just for life. That's where the name comes from. So life lords tend to be important people, not just for the work they do in the House of Lords, but usually for things they did before they became lords. And I have a lot of letters from various life lords and life, life baronesses. I, I don't know if that's the right term. But I have far fewer letters from proper hereditary peers because, well, uh, they tend not to be all that important. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. They just don't tend to have a very significant role in public life in the UK or its leading institutions for the most part. I mean, maybe dukes and viscounts all run hedge funds or something, but in private. So for the most part, unless you are a regular reader of magazines like Hello or Tatler, which cover the aristocracy, and, and I am not, um, these people live in relative obscurity. But I do have a couple letters from hereditary peers. This one is from the Marquis of Northampton, uh, who I wrote to because at the time, he was the pro Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of Freemasons. And you know, uh, British Freemasonry is a noteworthy organization, I guess. I don't know. It was odd sounding choice, I guess. But but I wrote to a lot of people who headed up pretty much any decently important organization. I mean, I wrote to the head of the Strategic Rail Authority and the head of the Vegan Society. So the Marquis of Northampton was kind enough to write me back. And he wrote. Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter of 7th December asking me what my favorite flavor of ice cream is. Although I am very partial to chocolate chip, particularly if it is homemade, <laughs> I have to confess even more of a liking for vanilla ice cream, especially when it is made with double cream. With best wishes, yours sincerely, the Marquis of Northampton. Now, it's a, a couple things to gout. It's a really plain letter. There's no, it's just a normal piece of paper like you might buy anywhere. Um, and also it's really specific. I mean, he likes it with double cream, which is uh, a British term, or at least non-American term, for cream that's like got a really high fat content, like more than whipping cream. 
anyway, so there we are. That's a letter from a Marquess. Um, one of the things I liked about doing this is I, I thought that my letters might seem a bit like fan letters, but to people that don't normally get fan mail. So I guess the North, the Marquess of Northampton is an example of that. Um, I should also explain what a program master is. The grand master of the Freemasons in the UK is by tradition, a senior Royal who doesn't really get involved in the day-to-day -day stuff. They're just like a figurehead. So there's usually a program master who actually runs things. But in this case, he's still a Marquess, which is uh, a title between Duke and Earl. So it's actually a really senior guy in the ranks of the nobility, but not a member of the royal family. By coincidence, the other hereditary peer letter I'm going to share with you today is also from a Marquess, the late Marquess of Bath, who is more commonly known to everyone simply as Lord Bath, uh, which is, I guess, a form of humility if you're a senior royal, uh, sorry, senior noble, to, to just be happy to be called Lord Bath. Um, anyway, he was arguably the most public of the hereditary peers in Britain for many years. Um, and that's because uh, the home of the Marquesses of Bath, which is called Longleat House, which you can see here is on the letterhead. Longleat House um, is also the home to Longleat Safari Park, which is a really famous safari park here in the UK. It's the first safari park ever to be opened outside of Africa. And uh, for over 20 years, it's been the subject of a BBC documentary show called Animal Park. And during his lifetime, Lord Bath was a regular on the show, semi-regular. Anyway, so here's a letter. It says, uh, Miss, Mrs. Fredo Rockwell. So he wasn't sure about my gender, which I, so I appreciate him being inclusive, I guess. Uh, Dear Fredo Rockwell, thank you for your recent letter. As I am diabetic, I much regret that I'm not allowed to eat ice cream, not even one mouthful. But when trying to imagine what flavor I would most enjoy, if allowed, I am thinking of pistachio with large, juicy loganberries. I, I had to look that up. A loganberry is a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry. I am enclosing a signed photograph as requested for your collection with best wishes, the Marquis of Bath, dictated by Lord Bath, but signed in his absence. Still a magnificent letter. Um, Lord Bath had a, a uh, reputation for being a real artistic sort of bohemian type, as you can see by the way he's dressed here. He's got bare feet. It's not what you expect a Marquis to wear. Um, but yeah, just like one of these sorts of larger than life characters that I think is going to be sadly missed. And um, yeah, but Longley House still going strong. You can still go to the safari park and have monkeys tear off your windscreen wipers, which I've done. Um, also, before we move on to the uh, wider royal family, I thought I'd share this letter. It's from a man named Tony Little. He's not even a lord, but at the time, he was the headmaster of Eton. And as you may know, this is the most elite school in the UK. It's where Prince William and Prince Harry went to school, and it features prominently in what I thought was one of the better episodes of season two of The Crown, which is actually the episode uh, where Prince Philip decides not to send Prince Charles to Eton. But anyway, um, here's the letter. There's going to be a few crown references in this video, if you guys don't mind. So it says, uh, from the headmaster, A.R.M. Little, uh, dear Mr. Rockwell, I fear I cannot help you with the educational establishment. I don't, I didn't ask for the whole educational establishment. I just asked for him. But, but for me, pistachio probably wins the prize. These days, there are so many ice cream flavors to choose from, and most are seductive. So... <laughs> Well, okay. First of all, Lord Bath, I happened to notice when I was looking at his Wikipedia page, went to uh, Eton. So maybe there's a pistachio connection there, uh, like a cabal of pistachio eaters from the ruling classes. I don't know. But uh, just that little extra comment that most ice creams are seductive. I mean, who can argue with that? But it was, it was, it's a nice addition to the letter. Anyway. Um, so next I'm going to move on to a, an actual royal. But uh, before I do that, I want to explain just in case you're expecting it, I didn't write to Prince William or Harry. It's probably hard to remember, but back in 2004, neither prince was really a public figure. William was in his last year at university up at St. Andrews in Scotland, where he met his future wife. And uh, Harry was only 19, so I didn't really feel right to bug them at the time. But the rest of the royal family I considered to be in play, so to speak. So let's begin with the Queen's cousin, Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent. You may recognize him as the chap who hands out the winner's trophies at Wimbledon every year, years when there aren't pandemics. And uh, he's also the official head of lots of important organizations. And just by coincidence, I didn't plan this. 
Uh, Prince Edward is the actual Grand Master of Freemasons in England, the one that the Marquis of Northampton was Program Master for. I'm not obsessed with the Masons, but, you know, I just thought since it's happened, I'd mention that. Anyway, so this is the initial letter I got from the Duke. Oh, that's... There we go. It says, uh, Dear Fredo Rockwell, the Duke of Kent has asked me to write and thank you for your letter and has enclosed a signed paper for your collection. So now this is a bit of the, like the, here's your photo letter I sometimes get, except for instead of a photo, it's a signature, which is kind of unusual. Um, that's only happened in one other instance where someone sent a signature on a separate piece of paper, but they have a Royal connection. So I thought I'd share that. So, uh, this is from David Dimbleby, who was for many decades, the main commentator on all Royal occasions for the BBC. So, you know, royal marriages and the like. Um, and then his father was even more famously the um, commentator for the Queen's coronation in, in 1957. But it says, uh, from David Dimbleby, Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter. My favorite ice cream is ginger. I am sorry I do not have any photographs, by, but I am enclosing an autograph instead. Yours sincerely, David Dimbleby. Um and there it is. So there we go. Um, also ginger. That, I, I'm not even really sure what ginger ice cream is or, you know, who would eat it, but other than David Dimbleby. <laughs> but there we are. So that's uh, a unique one. Anyway, so I didn't get an answer the first time from the Duke of Kent back to him. So, of course, I wrote again. And I got this response. Uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, Thank you for your letter of 22nd September. I am sorry to disappoint you, but we are not able to give personal information regarding His Royal Highness's likes or dislikes in case such information is misused in any way. I am sure you will understand. Uh, sincerely, Nicholas Adamson. I mean, I, I, I can guess. I'm not sure I completely understand. I mean, gosh, maybe someone might make a YouTube video about it. Uh, but no, I, I mean, I, I don't know if they mean somebody doing something untoward by, uh, serving contaminated ice cream or, or what, I'm not sure. But, um, anyway, one of the more memorable rejection letters I got, um, and I didn't obviously just keep pursuing them after that response. So I thought that was pretty final. Um, so you might think that doesn't bode particularly well for my, uh, my chance of getting a successful answer from anyone in the Royal family. And uh, I have to admit I wasn't entirely confident I was ever going to get a particularly good answer because, um, you know, it's the royal family. But anyway, my confidence or my sorry, my lack of confidence was misplaced because here's a letter from the Duchess of Cornwall, who is currently the wife of Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. And uh, the Duchess and the Prince were married in February of 2005. This letter was actually from a few months before that in December 2004. So instead of having Duchess of Cornwall at the top, although it's sent in an envelope from Buckingham Palace, which says there, and says Fred Rockwell, which I get occasionally, um, this one has from the office of Camilla Parker Bowles, which was her name before she married Prince Charles. Um, and it says, uh, Dear Fredo, I was delighted to receive your letter and very touched by your thoughtful comments. Thank you very much for taking the time and trouble to write to me. I send you best wishes. Yours sincerely, Camilla Parker Bowles. That's obviously a standard form letter that she just writes to people. But then what's amazing is at the bottom, my favorite ice cream is chocolate chip from haagen -Dazs. And a lot of times I get letters where a private secretary, a private secretary has been dictated a letter and a, a sign in their absence, like the one from Lord Bath. But this one, I actually think this is her. I mean, it's got a signature, her name. And then it says my favorite, you know, so that's really cool. So I was really excited to receive this. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just not one I was expecting. Also, I've covered up this address at the bottom because it doesn't say Buckingham Palace. It has the address of a house, which according to Google Maps is like a suburban, a very nice house, but it's just a normal suburban house in South London. So I guess that's where she lived at the time. Um, so uh So moving onwards, you might be wondering about the Prince of Wales himself. So here's the first letter I received. 
I can get it out. Here we are. So, Clarence House, which is where the prince lives. Uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, the Prince of Wales has asked me to thank you for your letter of 10th February. His Royal Highness is grateful for you to taking the trouble to write to him as you did, but I regret his, he is unable to reply personally. However, I am enclosing a postcard of the Prince of Wales for your collection, which I hope you may like. I am hoping, I'm sorry to have to send you such a disappointing reply. Nevertheless, his Royal Highness has asked me to send you his best wishes. So again, that's like my standard. Here's a picture, but sorry, we're not going to tell you about the ice cream type letter. Although I got to say, it's a pretty cool picture of, of uh, Prince Charles with a little puppy. And he's always, he's very well known for his uh, love of outdoor pursuits. So it's a very fitting postcard picture. So you might think, oh, well, he got shot down. But um, in my first video, I explained how sometimes I got very creative to get replies. Uh, so in this instance, I, I didn't go back to Clarence House. I wrote to the prince care of another address. So Camilla is known as the Duchess of Cornwall. And that's because Prince Charles, in addition to being the Prince of Wales, is also the Duke of Cornwall, as well as the Duke of Roths, Rothsay and the Vice Admiral of the Canadian Navy and a very long list of other titles if you want to look them up. But anyway, the Duchy of Cornwall, as it's called, is actually a commercial company besides being a title. And Prince Charles owns and runs it. And the Duchy does lots of things. But for many years, it had a premium food brand, which you could buy in uh, one of the supermarkets here in the UK called Waitrose. Uh, the, it was called Duchy Originals uh, at the beginning. And it sold lots of different products, usually organic. And it's most famous maybe for its biscuits, cookies, you know. So um, so I wrote to the head office of the Duchy of Cornwall. And I have to say, this is perhaps like the my greatest triumph as an ice cream letter writer, this letter right here. So Duchy of Cornwall, uh, that's the symbol for the Duchy. And it says, Dear Mr. Rockwell, the Prince of Wales has asked me to write on his behalf to thank you for your letter of 2nd March inquiring as to what his favorite flavor ice cream is. His Royal Highness likes both organic vanilla and organic lemon, but pointed out that it was rather an extraordinary letter to receive, especially as when he read it, it was snowing outside. His Royal Highness has asked that I send you his best wishes. Yours sincerely, etc. Now, I do remember getting this letter and I remember it was not long after it had snowed. See, it was in March and I think it snowed like in late early March or late February. So I sort of knew what he was talking about. And it seems to me, I mean, I have no proof, but it sounds like the sort of letter that the prince actually heard, like my ice cream letter that I sent and responded and made a sort of dad joke like, oh, what an extraordinary letter to get on a day when it's snowing about ice cream. It's the sort of thing that is never like that sort of detail is just not included in this letters I get. And so it makes me feel like he actually responded, which is really cool. So it wasn't just someone making it up. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. And this is just like I say, one of my most treasured letters. And I should point out the two ice creams that he mentions, uh, organic vanilla and organic lemon are flavors that Dutchie Originals actually sold as ice cream at the time. So a bit of uh, product placement from our future sovereign. And you got to admire his, uh, his work after there just to send that out in a letter. So that was pretty cool. Um, before I move on to the queen, who's next, I, I want to explain, uh, this was a bit of a surprise to me. I thought, I assumed that I'd written Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward, uh, Princess Charles' siblings. But when I look in my notes that I kept, here are my notes, like all the people that I wrote, um, I can't find them anywhere. So I, I'm guessing maybe I didn't. If I did, I didn't write it down and they didn't write me back. But I probably didn't write them, which surprises me now. I'm guessing the thinking I had was I was really concentrating more on important people. And to be frank, uh, Andrew and Edward and Anne are not like really that important in the daily life of most, most British people. When they do appear in the press, it's usually bad news in the sense of like slightly embarrassing scandal stuff. Princess Anne less so. So I sort of feel bad, especially I didn't write her because I think she's for a royal done a fair amount. But anyway, that's why I don't have any letters about them. So with the Her Majesty the Queen um, starting off, this always seemed a bit of a long shot. There's this long running question that journalists talk about. You hear about from time to time. 
Uh, it's what's in the queen's handbag. I don't know why that's like an obsessive question, but it's something that I've heard many times the press speculate about. And it's almost a sort of rhetorical question for an impossible question to get an answer from. Mm -hmm. And there are even articles where people analyze what she pulls out of her handbag and try and come up with a list. Um, also in 2003, so a few months before I started writing these letters, there was a scandal where a Daily Mail journalist, uh, sorry, no, Daily Mirror, Daily Mirror journalist got a job as a footman for a few weeks and then uh, revealed these photographs of the Queen's um, breakfast table, notably, which showed that she was eating cereal out of a Tupperware bowl and, uh, you know, all these sort of private details about their life. And it was a huge scandal, partly the security uh, angle that a reporter got in like that, but also it seemed sort of an affront to the Queen's Majesty to reveal how she ate her cereal. So I didn't hold out a lot of hope that with just like a normal letter, they were going to tell me her favorite flavor ice cream. And uh, yeah, I was right, at least at first. So here's the letter, first letter I got from Buckingham Palace. This is really nice paper. You can't feel it through a video, but trust me. So it says, Dear Mr. Rockwell, the Queen wishes me to write and thank you for your letter. Although it is kind of you to write, I think you would like to know that it is not Her Majesty's patient, uh, practice to answer queries of a personal nature. I am sorry to send you a disappointing reply. Yours sincerely, Susan Hussey, Lady in Waiting. And it's there's something about a really posh no that's kind of enjoyable to read, just the way it's phrased. Uh, I think you would like to know that it is not her, you know, like, no, I'd actually just rather get the answer. But anyway, it, it's a, it's a pretty cool letter. I think it's probably pretty standard. I can imagine that people write in with stuff all the time and that, um, lady in waiting, Susan Hussey writes a lot of these letters. And actually, um, I didn't know this at the time, but she's actually been part of the queen's, uh, sort of staff for decades. And she's fairly well known amongst Royal watchers. I'm not a Royal watcher, but she is and she was first hired, I read, in 1960 after Prince Andrew was born to answer all the letters that came in to congratulate the Queen. So actually, she's a famous letter writer of sorts, so it's good to have a letter from her. But anyway, at the time, I still thought, well, lady-in-waiting to the Queen. I mean, that's kind of significant. So I wrote uh, Lady Susan, Susan Hussey, a letter herself. And I got this reply, which, um, well, I'll just read it. It says... Dear Mr. Rockwell, Lady Susan Hussey has asked me to write and thank you for your letter of the 15th of May. I am asked to say that Le I am asked to say that Lady Susan is unable to correspond with you. Uh, yours sincerely, J. Gray, Secretary. And again, it's just like a really posh get lost, but done so nicely. Although I also felt a little bit small, I have to admit, after I first opened this. Um, I don't think... J. Gray is a real person. I, I was, had a thought, maybe I should write J. Gray, whoever that is, and ask them uh, what their favorite is. Just go down the chain. But um, at the time, I sort of assumed that was just somebody's name they made up. And Googling it today, I can't find a J. Gray on the palace staff, at least not publicly available. So anyway, that was a bit of a rejection. But um, as I've said before, I always like to try creative ways to get some sort of answer. So at the time, there was a brand of ice cream which had the warrant of the Queen Mother, so Queen Elizabeth's mother, who's also uh, named Elizabeth. And uh, a warrant is a little logo that appears on products. You see them in grocery stores here in the UK. If there's a product that a senior member of the royal family eats or likes to use, and then they get permission to put this little logo on, sort of showing that the Queen or Prince Philip or someone uses this product, and it's kind of a big deal. So this ice cream company had a royal warrant from the Queen Mother at the time, and it said on their website that they would not tell anyone her favorite flavor ice cream. So I didn't bother to ask them about that, but I did write to ask, do you know Queen Elizabeth's? And I didn't get an answer. So I thought, well, I'll write the head of the industry association. Someone must know, you know. So this is a letter I wrote to the Ice Cream Alliance. It's called. It says, uh, Dear Fredo, I write further to your letter of 31st May 2004. I do not have any details of the Queen's favorite flavor of ice cream. However, I would suggest that you write direct to Buckingham Palace, who should be able to answer, answer your question. Yours sincerely, Catherine Taylor. Well, no, sorry, Catherine Taylor. That, that was useless advice, but it's not your responsibility to reveal that sort of thing. So no hard feelings. 
So, so I started writing to Buckingham Palace again, but this time I decided I'd write to the royal chef. And the reason I did this is uh, I found out online um, menus of what had been served at various state banquets. And state banquets are like official occasions where a head of state come and you know, it's a big deal and they have like a special menu, which is chosen by the queen. And uh, yeah, on the 20th of November, 2003, the queen had served coffee ice cream as one of the desserts at the state banquet for the then president, George Bush. So I thought, hey, maybe the answer is coffee. So I wrote the royal chef saying, is is that the queen's favorite? Because she chose it. I sort of thought it'd be easier to get an answer if I sort of provided a possible answer and they'd either say yes that's right or no it's this other flavor so i got this one totally unexpected dear mr rockwell thank you for your letter addressed to the royal chef and i apologize that i have not replied to it sooner in response to your question coffee ice cream is not the flavor of ice cream that the queen usually chooses for a state banquet the royal chef proposes a number of different dishes for each course of the banquet and her majesty makes a selection ice cream is a popular choice coffee being one of the many proposed flavors, but is only one of several suggested cold puddings, many of which are not ice cream based. So I need to explain in the UK, pudding means something different than it does in America. It's not um, jello pudding kind of custardy stuff. So yeah, they call that custard here. So pudding here, at least in my family, it's used just like dessert. People say, what are you having for pudding? Um, from what I've read for the, for the royal family, pudding refers to... Um, basically a, a dessert that's not fruit. Um, anything served after the main dish that's sort of sweet is considered a pudding. Anyway, I hope that the above information is of interest. Yours sincerely, Andrew F. Farquharson, assistant to the master of the household, which is a pretty cool title. Anyway, I was really impressed by this letter because it's not just a get lost. It's a couple paragraphs and, you know, it goes on to explain how the queen chooses her menus. Um, a lot of effort. So, I, I respected that, but I, I still wrote him back. <laughs> I said, you know, because he refers to the many things that she's chosen. And I said, well, could you just give me an idea of what she chooses most often? So I was getting pretty desperate at this point, And I was going to be happy just to have a even a slim glimmer of an answer. But he said, um, he wrote back, he said, Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter of June 27th. I'm afraid I do not have the information you ask for. Since there are so many different flavors of ice cream, the frequency at which they are repeated is very low, and I do not have enough records to confirm if one flavor has been uh, has proved more popular than any other over the years. If there is one, then this is purely by chance. I apologize for not being able to give you a more definitive answer. With kind regards, Andrew F. Farquharson. So, I have to admit, um, despite this not containing an answer, these two letters from Andrew Farquharson, if I'm saying that right, uh, perhaps the most spectacular of any of the ones I've had. Um, and I especially realize it now having looked him up on Google. Uh, he was a, like a close confidant to her majesty, according to some journalists at the time. And, um, the fact that he took, uh, such time, I mean, his letters are not like massively long, but they're very carefully phrased. So he obviously spent a bit of time on it. And um, I, I guess it's impressive because I must have come across as a bit of a crank. I mean, maybe I do now, but definitely then just this weird person asking about <laughs> the queen's favorite flavor ice cream. And he's so respectful and courteous. And it's hard not to be impressed by that. Um, whatever you think of the royal family, their staff are incredibly courteous and, and good at their job. So um, at this point, I didn't feel like he continued to barrage the nice folks at Buckingham Palace with letter after letter. So I stopped. But in actual fact, the Queen's favorite flavor, or at least one of them, was recently revealed to the public by by the royal chef. I don't know if it's the same royal chef that I was writing to, but it's a guy named Darren McGrady who claims to have been the royal chef at the time. I'm kind of wondering if there was more than one. But anyway, uh, since leaving Buckingham Palace, Darren McGrady has moved to Dallas, Texas, of all places has a website and a catering company and makes YouTube videos revealing the favorite foods of Her Majesty the Queen, including a recent one from this summer about Her Majesty's favorite type of ice cream dish, the bomb glace, which is French for ice cream bomb, which sounds really modern, but is actually, as he explains in the video, a really 
old fashioned sort of 19th century dessert, but it's the bomb anyway. Um, so at least from this video, it appears that the queen's favorite flavor is chocolate mint, which is massive. I mean, the fact that this is just sitting there on YouTube. Um, I also wonder why he didn't answer my letter when I sent it to him. But anyway, uh, yeah. So just to give you a bit of perspective, that's the same flavor uh, that's the favorite of Sir Michael Wilcox, who is the former Black Rod of the House of Lords, which is like the House of Lords Sergeant at Arms, and Lord Peter Goldsmith, the former UK Attorney General. So I guess if you're those two people and you're watching this video, you have the same favorite flavor as Her Majesty the Queen, so you're in good company. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment, as that will encourage YouTube to suggest this video to more people. And of course, I'd be really delighted if you'd consider subscribing as well. Uh, if you want to see the rest of the letters, I've been revealing them for the last six months or so on my Twitter account. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to have a closer look. But I've not tweeted any of the letters from Prince Charles, the Duchess of Cornwall, or the Queen at the point of making this video, at least. So for the moment, these are YouTube exclusives. And uh, I still have another video planned to talk about my very brief career. <laughs> as a Hong Kong film star. Plus I do regular videos about weird moments in politics from around the world. Plus I have some more videos about pop culture in the works. So, well, you know, basically you'd have to really be crazy not to want to subscribe to my channel. Okay, that's it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And I hope to see you again soon.